This is going to be another question and answer video. And I got an interesting question about conspiracy theories. What do I think about conspiracy theories? So a conspiracy is two or more people getting together in agreement to commit a crime or something evil. That's all it is. So why are there conspiracies? I'm going to tell you why I believe a lot of the conspiracy theories are true. The average man is going to call them uh, not true. He's going to say it's just a conspiracy theory. But here are some reasons, some biblical reasons, why I believe that a lot of these conspiracy theories are true. And then if you watch to the end, I'm going to tell you some dangers of conspiracy theories. But number one, one reason why I believe in conspiracies is because they are trying to derail the work of the Godhead. In Psalm 99 and verse 9, it says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at His holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. This world has a problem with the word holy. So they have a problem with a holy God. And the greatest verse in the Bible to show you conspiracies are real is Psalm 2 and verse 2. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. So they have set themselves against a holy God because they want to stop his work. Imagine God and his plan like a giant train barreling through everything in its path and the devil is throwing giant buildings in front of it and trying to blow the tracks out from under it and it just keeps on barreling through. And there are people and beings out there trying to derail the work of God. God is a holy God. People think they are just fine without Him. They think they can establish their own righteousness and be their own final authority. People with different backgrounds and opinions about life will still gather together, even though they may be enemies, they'll gather together for one thing. And if they don't ever gather together for anything else, they will gather together to go against Jesus Christ. They'll make an agreement. They'll make a covenant with each other. They will come together against Jesus Christ, just like the Pharisees and Sadducees. They didn't agree on things, but they would come together to go against Jesus Christ. In Matthew 16, 1, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. They came together. The greatest type of Jesus Christ in the Bible had people conspiring against him. In Genesis 37, 18, Joseph, it talks about when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Since God is holy and good and right and just and perfect, they try to derail him by making his creation think that he is evil and unjust and mean and twisted. So they call evil good and good evil. In Isaiah 5.20 it says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. When someone wants people to go against a holy God, you have to make the things he stands for be evil in their sight. To brainwash them into thinking that a holy God is evil. Everything God stands for in the Bible is holy and just and right. So you have to twist things to make people think those things are wrong. Just like in Daniel's case. They couldn't get Daniel to break the law. So they made praying to his God against the law. And Daniel 6, 4 through 5, it says, Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they couldn't find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Daniel was good. So they had to turn something good into something bad before they could stick him. God is good. So you have evil men and the devil conspiring to make you think evil is good and good is evil. God plainly tells you homosexuality is wrong. 
He says, man shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. Is it, is a, it is an abomination. And the world says something opposite. The world says, you can't help who you love. So they have to make it seem sweet. They make it seem innocent. They see two sodomites and they say, oh, how sweet. God says, how sick. That's an abomination. Their parts aren't meant to go together. It don't work. It's obvious. The plumbing is all wrong, as they say. And that is why the Bible says it is not convenient. In Romans 1, 28, Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. God didn't set it up that way for a man to be with a man and a woman to be with a woman. God says it is wrong to kill a child. The world and evil men say it is women's rights. That way they make the women think, hey, this is good. They're sticking up for my rights. So you see how it goes? That sounds ridiculous to somebody that ain't blinded by the devil, but for somebody whose God is their self, it sounds pretty good to say killing a child is women's rights. You know, it's not a woman's right to kill a baby. That's not her body. It's got its own body. So what you have is a conspiracy. What you have is all the movies, TV shows, YouTube, and everything else brainwashing people into thinking God and the Bible are wrong and their emotions and feelings are right. YouTube is overrun with a bunch of effeminate men and drag queens trying to make you think evil is good and good is evil. There is a conspiracy to make you think Christians and the Bible are outdated and stopping the world from evolving and going into that next step. They're trying to derail God and the Bible by making you think God is evil and that people are good. But people are evil, including myself, and God is good. Outside of God, outside of being saved, there's nothing holy about me at all. My flesh is evil. But why are there conspiracies? It's because they want to derail the Godhead. And because they want to delay the inevitable. There are things written in the Bible that are coming to pass. Everything in the Bible is coming to pass, whether you like it or not. Whether the devil likes it or not. Whether the, uh, whether the unclean spirits like it or not. In Revelation 12, 12, it says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. I think the context of this is, of course, in the tribulation. But I think the devil knows he has a short time even right now. And he's doing nothing but delaying the inevitable. Now, he can deceive people into thinking that they could stop this holy scriptures. But I think deep down, the devil knows he's doing nothing but trying to delay the inevitable. But it's still going to happen when God wants it to happen. And when God wants it to come to pass. In Matthew 8, 29, the devil said to Jesus, Jesus, thou son of God, art thou come hither to torment us before the time? So even the unclean spirits, these devils, they know their time is coming. There may be something in them that still thinks they can win, but they are still just trying to delay the inevitable from happening. You see, they, they don't want to be tormented. In Ecclesiastes 8.11, it says, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of man is fully set in them to do evil. Now, sinful man wants to delay the inevitable. There are men trying to think of a way that they could live forever here on earth in their sinful state. And that is where the conspiracies about transhumanism comes into play. Where iron mixing with clay, as it talks about in Daniel, comes into play. To the average guy walking around in the world, this stuff sounds crazy. That's why when I'm witnessing to somebody, I'm not going to go up to them and start talking about this stuff. I'm going to give them the gospel. But Because the average guy walking in the world, he's going to think you're crazy if you talk about this stuff. But there are lost men in this world, evil men, a very few, who know what's going on. And they know what the agenda is because they're behind it. They know it's not crazy. And then you have the Bible believer who knows it isn't crazy because the Bible talks about it. 
but the, uh, the transhumanism stuff, you know, a, a man wanting to mix with machine and put and use technology, they want to use technology to delay the inevitable. Because deep down, man knows he's sinful. Deep down, he knows there is a God. Deep down, he knows he's going to die in face of judgment. Hebrews 9, 27, as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So he wants to delay the inevitable. The Antichrist will want to delay the inevitable. He will want to change times and laws. Daniel seven twenty five, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. In an attempt to delay the inevitable, or in an attempt to make what God said not come to pass, man will knowingly or unknowingly make covenants with the devil to delay it, or be so deceived he even thinks he can get the scriptures to not come to pass. This is the reason why there are conspiracies. As one guy called the devil the chief conspirator. Revelation 19, 19. It says, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sit on the horse and against his army. Many people... At, agree at agreement with each other, gathering together against Jesus Christ. To do what? The devil already knows he hath but a short time. He's simply trying his best to delay the inevitable, and the people are gathering together with him in an effort to do the same thing. And the devil has deceived them into thinking they can really take on the Almighty God. And maybe there's something in the devil that's so prideful he thinks he can take on the Almighty God because he is without fear. He was created without fear. Then you have the end of the millennium. In Revelation 20, 7 through 8, when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So I believe what you have in the millennium is a conspiracy, an underground society of people who are against the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, the Lord Jesus Christ knows about it. He's, he's going to allow it to happen because there's still going to be a free will. But what you have, you're going to have a conspiracy, a society of people standing against Jesus Christ. But you know what happens. They get devoured by fire. And you know, the devil has read the Bible more than we have, and he's seen these verses way more than we have, and he's heard them preached way more than we have, and he has seen the entire Bible come to pass, yet he still tries to delay the inevitable by gathering an army as the sand of the sea. But he can't stop the train. This train is going to keep going, and you can get on the train, or you can choose to get ran over by the train. Either way, the train's not going to stop. But things get worse with time. People get more evil. The only thing they can do is come up with more inventions to do evil with. That's why you have conspiracies. The only thing they can do is come up with things that hopefully they can use to delay what's going to come to pass. In Daniel 12, 4, it says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. The things you see being invented are used by these evil men so that they can try their best to delay the inevitable. Now, God knows when it's going to come to pass. Yet at the same time, these people do nothing but fulfill prophecy and make it just happen faster because he's fulfilling Scripture as he tries to go against Scripture. Man is going down. He gets older, he gets slower, and he gets more evil. In 2 Timothy 3, 12 and 13, it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. How come? It says in the next verse, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You're going to suffer persecution because of these evil men. And evil men get worse and worse with time. And if the kings of Israel and Judah were sacrificing children to the devil, if they were using enchantments and witchcraft 
then why should it shock you that there is a devilish pedophile ring of rich people, rulers, kings, princes, presidents, who are so evil that they rape and kill thousands of children that go missing every year? I mean, how could somebody write this off as just a conspiracy theory? It's very plain, very out there. You say, well, that's crazy. It's not so crazy. Where are all the missing children? And who do you think has the money to buy them? Rich people. There's billions of dollars involved. Billions. Man gets worse and worse. And this is why you have such wicked things going on. You have such dark, evil, and wicked things going on because, uh, that the average man on the street, he can't even believe it. It's so evil and twisted and wicked. The average pothead, drunk, drug dealer, guy on the street couldn't even come close to the dark, sinister plots that these evil men come up with, these rich evil men come with, up with behind closed doors. So the average drunk, the average average Joe on the street, he's going to say this is just conspiracy theories. His mind can't fathom something so evil. But man gets worse and worse and worse until the man of sin steps on the scene. To accept the man of sin, he's going to come in peaceably, of course. But still, I believe to accept this man of sin, you're going to have to be pretty far gone. In Second Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except to come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. All things are going that way for the man of sin, the Antichrist, to step on the scene. And the per this is the person they will count on to answer all their problems and to help them delay the inevitable. And we won't be here for the mark of the beast if you're a born-again Christian. But you can see how all this stuff about making things mandatory and making people do certain things before they can enter a store or workplace or something like that can easily be to prepare people for having to do something like putting a mark on their right hand or forehead. For example, before I go into work, I have to have my forehead checked, my temperature checked. There's something on the wall. I put my forehead in front of the in front of it on the wall. It tells me what my temperature is. That could easily translate into somebody having something on the wall to tell if you got a mark in your right hand or forehead. Now, I'm not saying to, pr uh, to just quit your job or something because of this. You know, I don't take it that far. And that's what I'm going to talk about later, the danger of conspiracy theories, taking things so far to where you can't even, you know, live a life anymore. I mean, I'm not going to be here for the mark of the beast. There's no sin in me getting my temperature checked. But at the same time, you can see where this could progress into something more and more crazy and the devil could use this stuff to prepare the way for these things to happen and at the same time he's doing it he's just fulfilling the scriptures no matter what the devil does he's going to fulfill the scriptures a mandatory vaccine is a wild thing if they were to ever do that that's a crazy thing and that's paving the way for something in Revelation 13, 17, it says, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. I don't doubt the conspiracy theories about the vaccine. I, I definitely don't doubt it. Do I know for certain that all the things people say about the vaccine are true? Of course not. And see, that's another thing. I don't just take a huge stand for certain things because... It's not like the Bible. The things the Bible says, I can take a huge stand on it because I know it is true for certain. But every conspiracy theory I see on the internet, you know, I don't know for certain. So I don't take a huge stand for everything I see on there. But do I doubt them? Absolutely not. A good portion of them are probably true. There are conspiracies because men, men want to delay the inevitable. And the devil deceived them into thinking that they can do that or even stop Scripture from happening. Next, there are conspiracies because man is desperate for his own kingdom. 
In Psalm 39, 5, it says, Man at his best state is altogether vanity. The Bible says in Romans 3, 10, There is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says in Romans, Let God be true, but every man and every man a liar. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, according to Romans 3, 23. And man wants his own kingdom, and he wants to call the shots. Man without God will continue to get more vile. And a kingdom without God as the head is going to be a sinful kingdom because man is so sinful. And since he is so desperate to get his own kingdom, man wants rid of anyone who might get in the way. That would be Christians who serve a holy God. The church of Ephesus was commended for their intolerance. In Revelation 2.2, 2, Jesus Christ said, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. A Christian can't stand an evil man who wants to do evil things and oppress people. And the Bible believer sees right through the political correct stuff and they see the things. The average man many times can't see that. They're blinded. You know, this is why I don't doubt the FEMA camps. The conspiracy theories about citizens who don't go along with a plan will be imprisoned because of their intolerance. Evil men are desperate for their own little kingdom, and people who are intolerant to their evil will stand in the way. They want rid of you. I don't doubt 9-11 was an inside job. I don't doubt that they never let a good crisis go to waste, because when a crisis happens, they can use it to take away some more of your freedom. And you'll be more likely to accept uh, new laws that take away your freedom, because they make you think it is for your safety. They do all these things for your safety. Where you have to wear this mask, it's to keep you safe. You know, all these different things. They want their own kingdom. They want to have a certain a population. They say there are too many people. Bill Gates, a filthy rich man, wants the population to go down. He doesn't care who has to die for that to happen. That's evil, and it's also very stupid. There's plenty of room for people. Uh, you know, when I'm driving down the road, I see tons of spaces without people. I mean, for miles. And you see, God loves people so much that he's going to want his government to just keep increasing. He's not going to want a population control going on. In Isaiah 9, 7, it says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. He's not going to want a population decrease. But man is de desperate for his own wicked kingdom. Where there isn't a big population of people, that is why I don't doubt that they would be for abortion. That's why I don't doubt they are for feminism. That is why I don't doubt they are for homosexuality. All these things are attack on the family. If you attack the family, this helps you decrease the population. This helps demoralize people. This helps people not to be right in the mind because everybody needs a mother and a father in a Christian home. They don't like for people to have a lot of kids, and they don't like for you to have a family with a mom and a dad who go by the biblical order of things because it makes people too sane. You can't control people that are sane. You can't imprison people who don't break laws unless you make their godly practices and their godly morals be against the law. There are conspiracies because man is desperate for his own little wicked kingdom and because they want to deceive the minds of the masses. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. This world is full of conspiracies because the God of this world, the devil, is the chief conspirator. Just like he got with Eve. He talked Eve into getting higher wisdom and to be up there with God if she ate the fruit. It says in Genesis 3, 4 through 6, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. See, he went against what God said. He said, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Man desires to get wisdom and deeper knowledge of things. This is why I don't doubt the CERN conspiracy theories. Do I know these things for certain? I, no, I don't. But I don't doubt the conspiracy theories about man wanting to contact spirits, to get deeper knowledge on things, to 
you know, get in touch with somebody from a, another world to get in touch with deeper wisdom, deeper knowledge. They're deceiving and being deceived. The evil men deceive the masses because they are deceived by the devil. Next, there are conspiracies because evil men, the devil, and seducers want to demonize the children. Look at when the unclean spirit came to this one guy in Mark 9, 20 and 21. It says, And they brought him unto him. They brought him to Jesus. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. They want to get you while you're young. Look at Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar got those young guys from the king's seed while they were young so they can indoctrinate them early on. Daniel 1, 3, and 4, And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. You see that? They want to get you while you're young. Teach you their language. Corrupt you while you're young. Proverbs 29, 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. You leave your child to himself, the devil's going to come in. He's not going to be to himself very long. If the devils and devils can get to you while you're young and raise you up with no morals, then in their mind... In the devil's mind, in the world's mind, in evil men's mind, this helps them derail God's train. But they can't stop the train. Conspiracies are real. And you can see that because of how they want to come at you while you're young. They want to demonize the kids. And next, they want to demoralize the people. They get to run wild in the tribulation time period. And you see in Matthew 24 how wicked it's going to be in Matthew 24, 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. It's going to be a wicked time in the tribulation. Look how it is now with these morons running around burning buildings, stealing stuff because they're too lazy to work. What you have is a bunch of foolish idiots. But the more sin you have, the less love there will be. There's nothing loving about what these people are doing. They claim certain people are haters that ain't haters, and they are the biggest haters of them all. Bunch of hypocrites. These people are liars, and they have the philosophy that the more sin you put up with, the more you love the person. This makes no sense. And if they can demoralize the masses, then they cr can create slaves. John 8, 34 talks about servants of sin. Somebody thinks they're free because, you know, they think they can go do whatever sin they want to. They say these Christians are just slaves to God in the Bible. No, I have a, a lot more liberty in Christ than you do out in the world. You're not free. You're not, you know, you're, you don't have freedom. You're a slave to your sin. And everything from your youth up was an attempt to, to, to demoralize you. Even these cartoons that come out with today, they seem so sweet. They seem so innocent. But they always throw in something devilish and some wicked music. I mean, even Alvin and the Chipmunks sing Lady Gaga music. I mean, she's, she sings about filthy junk. If you look at the trending section on YouTube, you will see the plot you will see, they see a conspiracy, a agenda to demoralize the masses. And when they pick rappers, it seems like they pick the most wicked people possible, the most perverted, vile, satanic puppet possible, because they want that filthy nonsense to rub off on you. I mean, these people are sexual, obsessed, completely filthy, look like street walkers. I mean... A bunch of filthy hoes is what they look like. And the men are a bunch of man whores that brag about being pimps. It's pretty sick. And they want that to rub off on you and your young kid, who a lot of parents let their kids listen to this filthy stuff. In 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. If you let your kid listen to filth, then you can't get mad at them when they speak filth. 
and when they'd start dressing filthy and when they start to want to dress like a hoe that walks on the street. But there's evil men out there. They want a generation of young women to act like Megan the Stallion and Cardi B and Nicki Minaj and Ariana Grande. They want to demoralize people because demoralized people are a lot more easy to control. And that's why I don't deny the conspiracy theory that, you know, the, the genre gangster rap that was very popular in the 90s. This was created by rich white men for the purpose of making more crime and to demoralize the masses. You know, you had Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg that came out way back in the 90s. They weren't really gangsters in real life. This was all, you know, something planned, controlled, to demoralize people. And that's what they did. Make crime shoot up. Why do you think the devil leads the female celebrities to dress half naked? To defile and demoralize men. If he can get a man perverted, then his flesh can lead him to the most vile sin imaginable. The conspiracy behind porn is to get a man so concerned with fulfilling the desires of the flesh that he can no longer think straight. He can't love because his lust would always come first. So why do I believe in conspiracies? Because these evil men display who they serve. They display who they serve. In 1 Samuel eleven two, it says, And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for approach upon all Israel. What a weird thing. He would make a covenant with them on a certain condition. They thrust out all their right that he can thrust out all their right eyes. Why do you think there is all seeing eye symbolism? Evil men who display who they serve openly, evil in plain sight, say open satanic symbolism so much, so prevalent today. The Antichrist will have a bad right eye, according to Zechariah eleven seventeen. It's, in, it's not just music. It's not just movies. It's even into the sports. The, M, the NBA player Kyrie Irving uses the symbolism on his shoes. It's on his Instagram. He does rituals before the games. He displays who he serves. The devil likes a display. He said to Jesus Christ in Matthew 4, 9, And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. He wants you to show some allegiance, and he'll give you some things. That is why the worship is on display somehow and in some way. They have to put out their symbolism. It's in plain sight. Once you see it, you really can't unsee it. Once you find out what the symbolism looks like, you see it everywhere. It's like the They Live movie, and you just pick up on things without even having to have those glasses on. You don't even have to have any glasses on like the guy in the movie, and you can see the symbolism you can see the evil first corinthians twelve ten talks about the discern the gift of discerning of spirits do you have that gift you know if you've if you if you stay in this book long enough and you reach you research certain things you're going to see the symbolism it's going i mean once you get into this bible you are ruined when it comes to this world it will not please you anymore you will not be satisfied by the wicked things you are satisfied by anymore because you just can't overlook the evil. You, I mean, you could get to a point where you get back into your sin and you live like a lost person, but still there's going to be that thing in you that you know that evil's there and it just bugs you to where you don't get that same pleasure out of it that you once did. But now, that's why I believe in conspiracy theories. And I'm going to show you the dangers of conspiracy theories. The danger is that you can get carried away with the conspiracy theories. While a lot of the conspiracy theories are true, definitely true. And there are probably even more that aren't true. I remember when I first started on YouTube back in 2010, and for about the first four years that I was on YouTube here, the conspiracy stuff was at an all-time high. I mean, Alex Jones was still on YouTube, and you had all these conspiracy theory channels like Puritan Pictures and the Vigilant Christian 
I mean, their videos were getting millions of views. Some conspiracy theory channels would get way too sensational. It would get to the point where they believed every celebrity death was an, an Illuminati blood sacrifice. And, I mean, obviously that's not true. Famous people die too for the same reasons we die many times. I mean, you had guys on YouTube and you still have them on here that think just because someone shook a person's hand a certain way that this means they are in a secret society because that was a secret Illuminati Freemason handshake or every time someone holds up the OK symbol with their hand that they think this means they're saying 666. Well, sometimes that's what it does mean. But most times they are just saying, okay, you know. There are guys who get so far into the conspiracy stuff that they think everyone is in the Illuminati or a secret Jesuit. They think if somebody has a black and white checkered floor that this automatically means that they are a Freemason or something like that. I mean, you get these guys that get so far out into things like they, get, they find out that a Christmas was uh, pagan, started out pagan, so they start going around telling all everybody that anybody who has a Christmas tree is pagan and they worship the devil. You get crazy things that happen like that. You can get so deep into it that you are no longer on a can get on a practical level. I mean, you can't talk to anyone straight and plain. You hurt your soul winning because the average person knows nothing about conspiracies. They think it's crazy. What they need to hear is the gospel more than they need to hear about your conspiracy theories. And you can get so far into conspiracy theory stuff that you neglect your Bible study. I don't know if you noticed this, but the guys who major on, on conspiracy stuff, they have a very, very bad doctrine most times. They also are deceived by one of the biggest conspiracies of them all, and that is the New Age Bible verg versions. All of these conspiracy guys, most of them, I would say... I mean, a good portion of the ones I've seen. They claim to be vigilant for the truth. They claim that they have their eyes opened, but yet they don't realize they have been led astray by Satan's greatest masterpieces, the new versions of the Bible. They're on there trying to, you know, talk about conspiracy theories, and they use the Bible. And what Bible are they using? Not the King James. They've been led astray by the New Age Bible versions. If you're into conspiracies, then it should be a side hobby and should come last behind praying, behind reading the Bible, behind studying, behind memorizing the Bible, behind witnessing to others. You'll get yourself so far out there in left field that you become completely ineffective. You'll just go around, you know, very critical, judging everybody who don't know about all the conspiracy theory stuff that you know about. And I mean, if somebody just read the Bible and never looked into conspiracy theory stuff i mean there's there's really no harm in that all you need all you need is the bible all you need is the lord jesus christ the bible tells you what's evil you don't have to know all these conspiracy theories you really don't have to know them because i mean they come and they go there's evil things going on as long as you know things are evil you don't have to know every evil thing that's going on you really don't but we, what you have is a bunch of conspiracy theory guys going around judging. I see them going around judging certain pastors and preachers because they don't know every single detail about all the conspiracy theories. And it's just stupid. A lot of conspiracy theory people get very puffed up in their knowledge. They spend so much time researching this stuff. They get very puffed up in their knowledge. They think they know everything. They think they're the only ones with their eyes open. They get a persecution complex. Things like that. The conspiracy theory stuff should be a very small side hobby that comes way after your Bible study and Bible reading. You'll find that most conspiracy theory guys are very messed up on prophecy. Most of them are post-trib. I mean, they, they, they have very bad doctrine for the most part. I'm not saying they're not saved. I believe they're saved. I believe that they have they are sincere they they are they're fed up with stuff just like we are and they're trying to expose conspiracies but when you start majoring make your your whole ministry just about conspiracy theories these things that I've mentioned will start happening okay so that is the danger of conspiracies
Now I'm going to tell you how to be a real doomsday prepper. And I did a fun video on the subject of doomsday prepping a few years ago, if you would like to look that up, but doomsday prepping. You see, a lot of conspiracy theory guys are doomsday preppers. I'm already prepped. I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Thessalonians 1.10, it says, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Romans 5, 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. I'm going out in a rapture before the tribulation, before the seven years of wrath. We know it's the whole thing's wrath because in Revelation 6, it's the lamb that opens the seals. It's the wrath of God. Now, I've been around a while. I know what the post-trib guys are thinking. And nothing against them. I really don't have nothing against them. I know that it's very possible. I'm going to face tribulation in this country before the rapture. I'm going to face hard times. It could get to a point where I am having to hide in a bunker or something. But I mean, because I mean, Christians are dying for the faith right now in other places. And it's very possible I can face some crazy stuff before the rapture. But I'm not focused on preserving my flesh. That shouldn't be your focus. And the doomsday guys, whether they know it or not... They, they come off as being more focused on preserving their flesh than they are anything. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's good for so I, I, I do think it's good for someone to store up food and guns and whatever else they want. I admire that, but that should come second to keeping yourself right spiritually. I'm focusing on keeping myself right spiritually. That way when I'm faced with having to die for my faith, I'll be ready to die for it physically. Many times the doomsday, doomsday preppers seem like they are placing a lot of their care on this physical life. They are dead set on not dying. And while I don't want to die either, there is something in me that's thinking about the other side at the same time. It's like I don't want to die, but I'm really thinking about the other side. Philippians 1, 23 and 24, For I am in a straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better than... Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Paul was in a strait betwixt two. He had a desire to depart. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 6, For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. Paul was ready to be offered. I'm not against someone preparing for a disaster and keeping stored up on guns and food, but when it comes right down to it, can man hold off a group of soldiers coming at him? It's not likely. I'm more concerned with keeping myself right spiritually. I've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and now each day I want to keep myself as right with God as I possibly can. That is more valuable and better preparation than anything you can store up. I'm in a spiritual kingdom right now. I'm not worried about a physical kingdom right now. If they came and killed me now, it's going to be okay because I'm coming back with my big brother on a white horse and they can't take him out. His name is called the Word of God. He's faithful and true and in righteousness he's going to judge and make war.